Okay, well, we've already talked extensively about the trapezoidal rule, which is a method of estimating a definite integral from, say, x equals a to x equals b. We then started talking about the recursive trapezoidal rule, which is an extremely efficient way to compute a derivative, at least efficient compared to the regular trapezoidal rule. Let's review a little bit about what the trapezo trapezoidal rule says. Let's say this is our function f, and we want the area under the curve. We want the integral of that function from a to b. Well, the trapezoidal rule, if we do the absolutely simplest case, would be make one trapezoid connect a f of a with b f of b, like that. And we compute the area of the trapezoid, the area underneath the straight red line, this trapezoid right here. And that's our estimate, which you can see this greatly overestimates it. Um, but then let's say, well, let's use, instead of one trapezoid, let's use two trapezoids. And you split the interval A and B in half, or you find the midpoint. And uh, maybe for now we'll just call that C. And then this point right here would be C, F of C, right there. And you make two trapezoids by connecting A, F of A with C, F of C. And then C, F of C connects to B, F of B, like that. So then what you're doing is computing this trapezoid under the green segment, and then this one. And we're still overestimating it, but you can see how we got considerably better just by using two trapezoids. Well, say that you're going to repeat this over and over, increasing the number of intervals each time until you get close enough to the true integral. Well, maybe you don't know the true integral, the true, true value of the integral. So what you're going to do is maybe compare two times in a row and when you find out that adding one additional interval, going from one interval to two intervals, doesn't change it much, you, you get a good feeling that you're close to the true value of the interval. But we don't want to simply go from one interval to two intervals, and then go to three intervals, and then go to four intervals. Although that works perfectly fine, it's very inefficient in the computer. What we would do in the next step is go from two trapezoids, we're going to double it. We're going to go to four trapezoids. <clears throat> Let me use blue this time. So now we've got one, two, three, four intervals. And the reason we do that is because we've already processed A before. We've done some processing with A before, and this middle point, and B, the end, other endpoint. Don't redo that every time. We're able to reuse it in the computation of the recursive trapezoidal rule with four intervals. So what we're going to end up doing is take the previous value when we had two intervals, do a little manipulation with it, and then do some manipulations with the two points that we added. Notice from two to four intervals, all we did was add that point and that point. And then when we double that to get to 8, maybe I'll go back to black. We only added four new intervals. Or I should say four new data points. We doubled the number of sections in the interval. And therefore, we don't have to do all of the processing over and over again. So in our pseudocode, which we're going to do in the next video, you're going to see that we do... We compute one trapezoid, the area of one trapezoid, that's our first estimate, and then inside a loop, we're going to double the previous number. So we're going to go from, from one, in the loop we're going to go to two. Use two trapezoids, compute the area. Come back up, we'll use four intervals, four sections in the interval, and then eight, and then 16, and so on, and then we'll explain when we can bail out of this loop. So we'll do that next.